Hi, my name's Alan Hurd from Hurd & Son. I thought I'd do this quick video as an explanation of how the timber comes into us and essentially why things cost what they cost. Now we manufacture joinery and we also do antique restoration and oak is one of the staple woods that we use. This is English oak or it's now called European oak and it's called Quercus robus. No it's not, it's called Quercus robur and that means strength and hard. Now it is very hard and it can be hard to work with. This is brown oak. Now you get English oak is, is a bit of a broad statement really because it comes in various colours and this is what you'd call brown and it's got a bit of pippy in it. Well the pippy means that it's got tiny little knots and those knots make the wood look fantastic when it's all been polished and finished. But I want to explain to you the fact that it comes into us, it's got bark on it and this piece of wood in particular will have been cut down the middle of the tree. So the tree will, if it's round, it will have been slab cut through and then before it's brought to us it's got the centre line through the heart of the wood which is there. Now we'll do some close-up shots of, of the wastage factor which I'll explain. Some architects and customers don't like to see the sap wood which is the, the white edge of the wood. To me, it's a nice contrast to the brown oak in the centre, especially if it's going in the house. It's no good if it's going outside because it'll simply rot too quickly. So these are going to be for doors. These lumps of timber here are all doors and frames. Each pair of doors that I've got to make have got to kind of match each other. You don't just go into it, oh, that's wide enough, we'll cut that, lock the end off, chuck that to one side. You can't do it like that. You have to read the wood at this stage. And what I mean by reading the wood is, we have to look for the medullary rays, you have to look where the cracks are, if the cracks can be taken out with a saw cut or with a rebate. So we've got to read the wood before we even cut it. Now when we've read each piece of wood, like this one is going to be two door legs, what I will do is do that and then that with the cross cut. So that will be cut off there, that will be a door leg. Uh, the length of the door leg, cut that in two and there'll be a little bit of sap wood left on the outside edge. Now I've got, to make, I've got to find another piece that matches that because when the two pairs come together I'd like to see the sap wood on the outside or, and so on so that they're bookmarked and matching. That's a quick explanation of how it comes into us. The other thing that we've got is the oak can be either kiln dried, air dried or come into us wet. Now when it's wet it's called green oak and that, you see green oak being made into big porches and big framed buildings, the old style framed buildings. And what you do is you make those in the wet form, machine it, which makes it a lot simpler. Then do all your joints, put it all together, and then the wood all twists, not twists, but tensions up as it's drying. That's no good if it's going to be going into a warm, centrally heated house. So you've got to have something that's kiln dried and keep it at a reasonable moisture content. The next stage of this video will show you a few of the cracks that we've got in the timber that is essentially wastage. When we buy this oak and sell it on to the customer, it's not because we want to charge 100% profit on it, but whatever we use, we will have wasted about 80% getting around the cracks, the knots and the sapwood and the shape of the tree that you can't use. That's a quick explanation as to why woodwork costs such a lot of money. You're not just paying for a man and his overheads, you're paying for a man to read each piece of timber as it comes in and uh, this is a more of an explanation of why the wood costs so much money. It's the conversion factor from the tree to the finished article and somebody has to pay for the waste. That's me done for a few minutes but the next stage you'll see us machining this and then we'll bring all the pieces of timber together so that what I've just explained seems a little bit more apparent and understandable. Thanks for listening. As you'll see on this piece of timber, this is the full width of the board, but we've got a split going through there, we've got a split going there, then we've got a knot just there, then we've got sapwood down the outside there, you perhaps can't see it very well, with another big knot here. So what I would have to do is cut along there and waste that it may get used for smaller jobs but highly unlikely and then from there across to the middle of the sapwood that would be the usable portion of the timber and that's why it's so wasteful when you buy in the timber because you're only using that centre portion there 
I hope this explains a little bit about the wastage but as you can see we don't get it come in in flat boards unfortunate but true when we did the other little video uh, I was showing you quite a big heap of timber uh, just here and as it has I'm trying to explain why um, anything in oak or hardwoods costs such a lot of money when it's got bark on the edge well now all of this is waste um, you can see that there's not very much left from the job and there's probably only about 5% waste there now if you'd got a job that wasn't using any of the sap wood that would be an enormous heap by comparison there's only three boards full boards left from the whole job but as you can see we've tried to make it as cost effective for the customer as we can um, and that's what's left so that's firewood what you'll see now is just a quick pan of what's left and then we'll merge into the shots of the finished two frames i hope you like what you see uh, if we can be any help to you just give us a ring thanks for looking bye for now